History has seen the Dallas Cowboys never starve for victories, but overripe for championships. Like the gradual changes in football's climate, the Cowboys' 1970 season unfolded shyly. In 1970, summer's sap strength was warmed by winter's wind, and not until December did the Dallas Cowboys come in from the cold. It was a season not for the fans, but for the players. A season not to be watched, but to be lived through. A season that saw their most humiliating loss and most satisfying victory. A season that saw the decline and rise of the Dallas Cowboys. January 17th, the Cowboys season was ended by the Baltimore Colts in the Super Bowl. A season's labor was lost on three bounces of the fickle ball. It was the closest of all previous Super Bowls and victory was not gained until the last nine seconds when Baltimore's Jim O'Brien kicked the winning field goal. But the story of 1970 was not the story of one game, but of a season that began for Tom Landry's Cowboys in late September in Philadelphia. Quarterback Roger Staubach took the Eagles' defense on a jagged, weaving ride on his revved-up roller coaster, and Dallas won. Beyond Staubach, the Cowboys seemed lifeless, and their 17-7 victory was won more on their reputation than their brilliance. In game two, the challenge was Fran Tarkinen and the football giants. Since early training camp, Tom Landry sought to alter Dallas style to a simpler offense, but it was the big play that beat New York, 28-10. In St. Louis, the big play offense stumbled, and the Cowboys were crushed by the Cardinals, 20 to 7. It came up rain in the season's fourth game. The Dallas defense reared its ugly head and shut out the Atlanta Falcons, 13 to nothing. Through four weeks, Dallas's record was impressive, while their performance was not. Dallas looks lifeless to this announcer, and they had better wake up before next week's game with those powerful Vikings. They took their 3-1 record to Minnesota, where the Royal Purple tarnished their star a second time. It was the worst defeat in Dallas history. Though the Viking offense scored easily and often, their work was made easier by the Purple Butchers, who cut the Dallas offense to pieces. A victory was lost, and so was running back Calvin Hill who would be nagged by injuries for the rest of 1970. Rarely would Hill summon the skills that made him 1969's Rookie of the Year. 
Dallas would miss their sky pilot, freewheeling and free falling, attacking a defense. With Hill hurt and just a spectator to their fate, the Dallas Cowboys met the world champion Kansas City Chiefs in the sixth week. Something old and something new spurred the Cowboys' fourth in six games. Rookie Dwayne Thomas' smooth stride spurned the Super Chiefs and eased the loss of Calvin Hill. Quarterback Craig Morton and Bob Hayes, who returned to action, burned the blitz as Dallas streamed away with a 27-16 victory. A rematch with the Eagles saw Lance Renzel dust off Philadelphia's defense. Twice, Renzel ran free and easy through the Eagles' leaky zone for scores. But Dallas was an undistinguished victor, 21 to 17. The Cowboys were 5-2 and, and apparently sleepwalking to a division title when time caught up with them in the big city. The Giants rode on Fran Tarkinen's blazing hot arm, and Dallas was branded losers again. The Cowboys collapsed into third place behind the resurgent Giants, and then were struck dead in the dark in a sundown shootout with the St. Louis Cardinals. Network television was a witness to the massacre as the Cardinals' merry-go-round turned Dallas into cannon fodder with their circle games. In one night, Dallas endured a season's worth of frustration, shut out under the stars. Their season's rush to a title had rusted in its tracks. As the fire left the Dallas offense, the volcano became extinct. In the year the big play died, the defense still burned with a rage to win. After nine games, the defense was steadfast, but it was evident that if Dallas was to win, their waning offense would have to be revived. For years, the sophisticated cowboy offense was designed not to rake, claw, and bully defenses, but to confuse and finesse them. It was not a matter of who had the ball, but where the ball was. With a variety of virtuosos on offense, the play was the thing in Dallas. First downs were disdained for touchdowns, and for years the Cowboys were the highest scoring team in the pros. From anywhere on the field, the offense cranked up rainbows that exploded into touchdowns. The symbol of triumph for the Dallas offense 
was a Bob Hayes touchdown and a field strewn with tacklers left in his wake. But too often in 1970, the symbol had soured and Cowboy fans left the Cotton Bowl unfulfilled and disappointed. So with their record at five and four, Tom Landry tried again for simplicity on offense. He traded the flamboyance of the big play for steadiness and victories. Using his tough tight ends, Mike Ditka and number 84, Pettis Norman, to shuttle in his plays, Landry assumed a personal share of the offensive burden. It was up to quarterback Craig Morton to execute the master plan. Morton now probed, not bombed defenses. The road to victory became a conservative one. However, the heart of Landry's plan was the running game, using rookie Dwayne Thomas and the compact Bronc Buster from Oklahoma, Walt Garrison, Dallas began to outmuscle opponents. This strategy was ideally suited for Garrison, whose style is shorn of subtlety and constructed to dish out the havoc of a punishing running game. To compliment Garrison, there was rookie Dwayne Thomas, whose free-flowing syrup strides carried him over 800 yards in 1970. Thomas's rushing average was the best in football, and he became the brightest glow in football's most devastating running attack. Dwayne Thomas, a new explosive element in an old formula for victory. The first test of the Landry plan came in the season's 10th game with the Washington Redskins. Dallas had to win all of their remaining five games to stand a chance in the NFC East. They would play two games with Washington, one each with the Green Bay Packers, the Cleveland Browns, and the Houston Oilers. The Cowboys have always had a Roman's appetite for victory, but never a Spartan's will to suffer for it. Against Washington, not only a new philosophy, but a new attitude won. Victory came from rookie Mark Washington's willowy strides. Victory came from the offensive line, from Tony Lissio, from guards Blaine Nye and John Nyland, from tackles Ralph Neely and Rayfield Wright, and from center Dave Manders. It came from three Dwayne Thomas touchdowns. It came from a team working and playing as one, not from the individual brilliance of one or two players. The second link in the chain of five came against the Green Bay Packers and the doomsday defense held them without a touchdown, and Dallas won 16-3. The next week against Washington, the offense scored 34 points, while the defense allowed none. 
the wrecking crew made their own breaks. Shut off the Redskins' deep receivers and devoured quarterback Sonny Jurgensen. Now it was Dallas gushing strength while the Cardinals and Giants faltered. Dallas came to Cleveland in the 13th week. The muck and mire dictated defense, and Dallas was savage. Linebacker Dave Edwards made two crucial interceptions, and on the pivotal play of the game, old pro Chuck Howley somehow found the muddy ball in his 34-year-old hands. Defense and a pair of Mike Clark field goals ensured a 6-2 win. Finally, on the season's last day, both New York and St. Louis crumbled. Dallas didn't. It was a day for the offense, which scored 52 points. But most of all, it was a title for a team that was pronounced dead in November. It was a day that ended the most rewarding regular season in the Cowboys' 11-year history. Dallas had won the NFC Eastern Division in many ways. They had won by blocking and by passing. They had won on all-out hustle. They had escaped to win. They had won by running. They had won by kicking and by blocking kicks. They had learned to win with position football. They had won with a flair. They had won with second effort, but most of all, they had won by defense. During the Cowboys' five-game stretch run, the Dallas defense was the best in football. In the last 18 quarters, they did not allow a touchdown. They were 11 men, all captains of action, waiting to ravage the offense. The soul of the Dallas defense were the four men who jousted in the often forgotten battles deep in the dirt. From the outside came 10-year veteran George Andre, number 66, and young Larry Cole, number 63. While they supplied the fire, veteran tackles Bob Lilly and Jethro Pugh supplied the fury. Pugh's trademark is flat-out quickness to the pocket or to the man running free in the open field. He was a pathfinder, a tracker, a stalker of quarterbacks. A decade of Sunday's wars has not diminished Bob Lilly's talents. In 1970, number 74 was more visible than ever. There is no tackle quicker for 20 yards, all the distance Lilly needs to pursue and plunder the man with the ball. Behind the front four were the linebackers. From the outside came Dave Edwards and Chuck Howley. From the middle came Captain Leroy Jordan. Dropping deep into the passing lanes, Cowboy linebackers glad-handed stray passes and shored up Dallas' one historic weakness, pass defense. The deep defense was manned by three all-pros, 
Mel Renfro, Herb Adderley, and Cornell Green. The fourth member was rookie Charlie Waters, already wise in the ways of the NFL. Four swashbucklers performing the ballet of pass defense. A powerful offense, a devastating defense, a match set of bookends to test the Detroit Lions in the playoffs. God dang it, let's go! Go back! Come on now! Get over! <laughs> Against Detroit, it was not a day for offense, but another day for the defense. Only the 49ers stood between Dallas and something they had never won, the NFC Championship. In San Francisco, a season's struggles bore sweet fruit. The defense broke open a 3-3 tie by twice turning over the ball to an offense that converted these gifts into touchdowns. Mel Renfro made the cornerback's classic play to set up the 49ers for the killing blow. A first down pass from Craig Morton to Walt Garrison bent the will of San Francisco. And with time dying, the doomsday defense broke John Brody's last straw. And Dallas won, 17-10. For the first time, another team walked off in sorrow, while the Dallas Cowboys took the magic carpet ride of champions. For Dallas, the third day of January 1971 was truly... Happy New Year! You can't imagine how it feels, because you never met, you never suffered with us like we've suffered, you know, in those losses in the last four years. It's a great reward for these fellows who've worked so hard to get there. Perhaps in past years there was success without suffering. In 1970, Dallas to the man sacrificed individual glory for the collective goal of a championship. It was the year the team won, a year that saw the decline and rise of the Dallas Cowboys. 